Yeah, welcome to this tutorial. I promise you this will be the best waistcoat making video you've ever watched. The measurements we'll be working with are basically the length, the underbust, the chest, the, the tummy, the hip. And that's it. The length will be 24 inches. The back 9 inches. The underbust will be using 9. And we are using 9 because the chest is small, which is 37 inches. The tummy is 34 inches. And the hip, which is 35 inches. So let's go straight to the nitty gritty of the day. The first thing we'll be doing is our safety line. We'll be taking one inch from the edge just to make sure both folded materials will be starting from a place of being equal because sometimes when you fold two materials together you just realize one protruded and the other one was inwards and two of them isn't just aligned and you just realize that everything you've done from beginning to the end was all based on the mistake so for safety purposes i would just like to take one inch from the edge of the material so the next thing we'll be doing which is what actually you do when you're cutting anything is to take an adjacent line from the first line you've measured so I promise you this will be a well detailed video on how to cut a waistcoat and I'll also be explaining the addition of sewing allowance so for the neckline we'll mark three and a half inches Then we'll mark 9 inches on the adjacent line. We'll go down by 1.5 inches. Then we'll join both points with the line to form our shoulder line, which is our back line, which is where we take our back measurements from. So the next thing we'll be doing is getting more of our horizontal measurements. The first thing we'll be getting is our underbust, which is 9 inches. We are using 9 inches because 37 is actually a small chest. I don't mean no shots. I don't mean to take no shots, but 37 is actually a small chest. So we'll be joining our marked out point with a line. And the next thing we'll be taking is our tummy. Now the tummy from the shoulder is 16, but we'll be marking 16 and half because half inch will be cut off at the top when sewing. We'll mark 16 and half again, then we'll join both points to form the tummy line. So all our horizontal line is actually coming to is actually coming out. So the next on the list is our hip line. Our hip, which is just the round measurement of where the, the length ends, is 24. But we'll be adding one inch because half from the top and half from the bottom will go away when we are sewing. So our hip line will be 25 inches. Now when I say hip, I don't mean go and be measuring, I don't mean for you to go and start measuring your hippo. The hip is actually where the length of the waistcoat ends. So that particular point it ends, you take a round measurement around that point. That is what you call hip when you're sewing your waistcoat, not your actual hip. So for our curve, which we'll be making at the bottom of the, the waistcoat, we measure three inches of both adjacent lines this is just preference if you want your own to be to have a edge a four corner edge fine if you want a curve fine if you want it to be protruded inwards even more fine it's just based on preference so as you can see we started from the bottom 
like Drake said, starting from the bottom now we're here. <laughs> so we're going up to form our slant. So our slant are using eight inches. Eight inches is actually small. This is small because the waistcoat I'm making is actually a five button waistcoat. So it's not actually one of those uh, the, the band or Don Jazzy waistcoats. <laughs> It's actually stereotype office waistcoat. So this is like a five, a five inch, but uh, as a five inch, a five button waistcoat. So there's a way you calculate that thing. If you want to calculate your button to form your slant, maybe four buttons, and you want them to be two inches apart. So you just do that, and you get your slant. So on our back line now, we measure the back. But since our back on the waistcoat doesn't start on our shoulder blade, we'll take one inch inwards. Because this is not a shirt or a polo that will start on that the back will end on your shoulder blade. So we take one inch inwards. As you can see, what we're getting now is five. So after sewing, we should be getting four, which is acceptable. So the next thing on the menu will be dividing the chest into four because we'll be folding the materials into four because as you can see we are folding the front piece into two the lining for the back will also be folded into two that is why we are dividing the chest by four now at the end of this video uh, before the end of this video I made a, a, an additional video that I attached to this video on how to explain the addition of sewing allowance so if you want to understand sewing allowance the sewing allowance problem that some people had with the suits though I try to make it very clear I don't know how people still have sewing allowance issues but if you have a sewing allowance issue this is the time for you to understand how sewing allowance work because you have to consider the button hole that and everything and I'll explain everything in details here so for the tummy I'm dividing by 34 I'm dividing 34 by 4 actually if you check very well, you see the way I'm dividing everything by four. What I actually do is I divide the table by two, then I divide what I got into two again. That's how you divide by four. So the next on the list is to divide is to divide the hip by four. The hip is thirty-five, so you divide it by four. So if you divide it by two, you should get at least seventeen and a half. So you divide seventeen and a half by two again. So you get what you get. <laughs> so if you check very well now, you see from the point I'll start taking my hip measurements. I don't start from the curve. I start from the initial point that uh, the initial uh, angle that was formed before, before the curve. So you see where I started from now in taking the hip measurements. So after taking the hip measurement, I will join those three points with broken lines I'm joining them with broken lines because they are not actually the lines I'll be cutting off so I'm making a habit of applying technical drawing into sewing clothes now <laughs> so I'm using broken lines so the next thing I'll be doing now is going back to the back and marking it out so the back points that I'm I marked, I will extend it downwards. I will just extend it down straight down. Make sure it's a straight line. Downwards. Then what I will do now is to take one inch inwards to give us that, that swagger curve, that curve of a waistcoat. So that point now, I'll be joining that point to the shoulder and also the chest so as you can see everything is coming out step by step so the next thing I'll be doing now is adding the sewing allowances but before I do that I will divide the chest the tummy and the hip into two to form our dart line so I'll be dividing my chest into two and I'll be marking the center point so the easiest way to do that is to divide your tape row Please guys, subscribe to the channel, don't just watch. Your subscription is what actually motivates me to make more videos. Because if you don't subscribe, sometimes I actually forget I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> so subscribe so you can, you can ginger me to, to drop more videos. 
because I'm willing and ready. So uh, your subscription is what actually fuels my interest. So I will implore you guys to subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, and watch more, watch my videos. If you watch my videos, you're actually encouraging me to drop more videos. So you'll be dividing the heap also. So when you divide your hip, you get your center point and you mark. My pocket actually starts from my chest line. So I don't like my darts to, to meet my chest line. I like it to be one inch or two inches below the chest line, depending on the mood I am. So if I want it down, 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 if I just want, if I don't like to see the dart, I want it to be far away, I mark two inches. But if I'm feeling good, I can mark one inch from the chest line. So I join all marked up points to form my dart. As you can see, I'm using a thick line. I'm using a thick line because I'll be actually cutting it off. So after doing this, the next thing we'll be adding our sewing allowance. The sewing allowance will be added. I promised that there is a video I attached to this video where I explain it in detail. So I explain everything in detail. So just watch to the end. I'm very sure you will not have any issue with sewing allowance again. Now for the chest, I'm adding two. I'm adding two because the dart is not up to the chest line. Now for the tummy, I'll be adding three. I'm adding three because of the dart. So my sewing, my sewing allowance I'm adding is my sewing allowance that allowance and putting who allowance i will explain like i said and the way i will explain i'm very sure even a blind man <laughs> will not even need to watch it twice to understand like i'm very sure you guys will commend me for explaining the sewing allowance so just watch to the end because i took my time to actually explain everything in detail so i will join everything with the curve and after doing that our uh, waistcoat is almost set. So as you can see, no stress. The next thing will be to join our former points to our new points. So our waistcoat is set. So the next thing now is to explain. Now I added two inches to the chest, which means I'm adding two to the front and two to the one in the bottom. Everything will become what? Four. Everything will become what? Four. So now that four inches will disappear now now i'll explain how that four inches will disappear so just watch and see when i'm cutting the lining i don't add any sewing allowance so i just divide by four and cut so all the sewing allowance is actually on this front piece so i'll explain to you how everything will disappear now the 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 two inches added at the front the two inches are added at the bottom so you will see everything and now you use half inch to sew here 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 on the chest line so everything will be true for the back on the chest line too you use half inch here you also use half inch there that's what three now after sewing everything so at the at the half inch line for the button hole half inch will overlap half inch which will become one inch everything will become what four everything will become four so that means the whole four has disappeared no 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 so for the tummy which is six because i add three at the back and top and the bottom half half one half half two two that's for the that now each will bring half which is one mm. it will become what It will become three so for the other one two it will become four for the tummy line now for the tummy line for the lining half here half here it will become what five now for that same tummy line when you overlap it by half inch it becomes six you do the same for the hip line also and that's it so that's how the sewing allowance goes so i hope i don't have to explain it again so let's go straight to the cutting process. So after the cutting process, we'll go straight to the sewing process. So just like I explained when I was explaining the sewing allowance, the dart 
on both sides we collect one one inch the sewing on both sides we collect one one inch the button hole we collect one one we collect one inch half half inch that's one the lining we collect one inch so you do all those calculations you get it so for the the pocket you mark two and a half this is based on preference don't say I, I i was the one who said that it must be you can use one you can use one and a half so for my pocket i'm using four inch so i'll move up by one inch to create a slant line because when your pocket is slant it is finer that is just the reason there is no other reason when your pocket is slant it is finer than when it is just straight so now for the height of the pocket is based on what I like so I'll just chuck it so when I'm making the breast pocket you will see it is based on what you like now for the double white pocket that will be below the tummy one inch below the tummy your pocket has to be one inch below the tummy your pocket doesn't have to be on the tummy because if you want to insert your hands inside your pocket it has to be below the tummy so you mark a desired point from that buttonhole line and start which i did then you mark out five and a half inch so i always tell you mark a desired point because i don't want to tell you mark one or mark two it's not a standard it's based on preference it's based on choice you can decide to start your pocket half inch gone from the sewing it depends on you it's all style I know somebody who makes a, a suit sleeve as big as the ankle of a palazzo a suit sleeve -o. <laughs> so I think everybody is just doing things their own way now so I just made that pocket measurement just so that before we go straight to cutting everything about measurement is out but what I was actually supposed to show you first is the cutting of the facing the cutting of the facing is basically just cut the material around the shape of the front edge and make it as big as you want as you can see I'm still trimming but though I like my own straight line because I don't like stress but I can decide to go all crazy and form angles and curves but it's just depending on how stressful you want the job to be me I just cut straight because I want able to just go simple and plain but in, on my next video which will be a double breasted waistcoat that will have buckle it will have a buckle at the back I will not be cutting this thing straight I'll be cutting it curve so you can know how to cut a lining for a curved facing so I'm cutting out my darts. I'm cutting out my darts because if I don't cut out my darts now, if I attach facing um, stay to it, I won't be able to see it. And that was why I did that. So the next thing I'll be doing is to attach my stay to it. After attaching my stay to it, I'll trim. Now you must be very good at cutting. And I always advise don't use sharp scissors when you are sewing. I don't really use sharp scissors because one mistake can just make everything done you just have to start all over again I use a scissors that is not too sharp because I always like to make sure I'm the one controlling the cutting not the scissors controlling the cutting so after gumming I, mean, I traced out my pockets to the front to the front piece to the front I mean to the correct part of the front piece so the next thing I'll be doing will be to cut off my dart which I already done before gumming it again so now I have to cut it out again and then I've, I've sewn it I'm using the pressing down to open it mind you the video will not be like this all through. I'll be, sh I'll be showing you the sewing process. So I just felt like there's no need sh uh, showing you how I, how I made it that. That one is something everybody should understand. Just sew it. 
when you cut something and you join it, it's not something I should be, I should be, I should be showing on the video. It's just a total waste of time. But if you're Latin, I'll be showing you how I made it, how I sew it while I was on the machine, step by step. Anything that needed to be skipped, I'll tell you. I'll tell you because if you feel like you still need to see it, you can always send me a direct, not DM. I don't know if there's anything like DM on YouTube. <laughs> you, can always com you can always let me know in the comment section, then work things out. But I, I try to make sure everything you need everything you need is on the video so I make sure no technical part is left out any part I left out is just anything I feel is unnecessary so the next thing I'll be doing will be tracing out my pocket so after joining both pieces I will start stamping my hand on it so I'll do that for the world pocket I'll also do that for the breast pocket Once more, I will say this, subscribe to my channel so you can inspire me to do more videos. For the ladies, I have a jumpsuit I made. I made a jumpsuit on, I made a video on how to make a jumpsuit without using a back zip. So this is a jumpsuit that has a sleeve but no back zip. So everything is just from the front. I have many videos on female wears so they're almost done and i'll start editing so now when sewing our breast pocket as you can see the white material is full i actually chose the white material because i want it to be conspicuous i want it to be clear so i'm sewing from edge to edge half inch allowance from edge to edge now when i'm sewing the other piece i'm not sewing from edge to edge again no. from middle to middle not from edge to edge no. from middle middle I'm saying it now this is what I'm sewing not this this is what I'm saying from middle to middle so after sewing I'll notch now I'm what I just explained to you now is how to sew a breast pocket so you can this is exactly how the to sew a breast pocket this is the best way to sew a breast pocket a breast pocket but this allows you to decide how big you want your breast pocket to be so you notch to the side of the sewing but you don't allow your notch to touch the thread but it should be very 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 close to the last thread but it shouldn't touch it so when you notch to the last thread for the upper part and you notch to the last thread for the down part you form something like an arrowhead that arrowhead is what you will stitch down to make everything firm when you are sewing it inside. So this waistcoat video is actually a form of an apology for delaying the dropping of the suit video. You know when I'm actually explaining things to my online student i usually make videos in parts i never knew that i was actually helping myself for the first time trying to trying to compile a two hour video man it's crazy it's taking me weeks so it's like i'm making a movie so the next thing will be to hem both edge but we'll not be doing that we'll do what we call matching on our local shop so you just put the pocket under the machine and so and that's what we call match just match them as i will say it so the hemming will be done later the hemming has to be done in a way that it won't even show outside so you hem both sides so the next thing will be sewing the double white pocket the double white pocket is also what we use in making the jacket pocket so when you make a double white pocket, you put an extension down, that's how you get a jacket pocket. But on this video, we're making do of, of just the double white pocket. For the double white pocket, there's no preference. When you are sewing a jacket pocket, I can explain some few things. But when you are sewing a double white pocket, you just try and make sure both sewing are on the same lines. And you just work with that. 
and it's not necessarily from edge to edge it just depends on how big you want the word socket to be and then you have to make what you are using to make it bigger than it so what we do next is to notch the middle notch the middle then you notch to the edge of each part up and down making sure it doesn't touch the thread Then when you are folding, you fold to at least half or less than half. It shouldn't be up to half. Less than half inches for up, less than half inches for the down part. That's how you get your, your double world pocket. I mean, it's not actually easy talking for almost an hour. <sighs> I wanted to just play music for this video since I was writing the process of making this stuff on the screen but I just thought if I do that my whatsapp will blow up everybody will just keep asking for explanation let me just do the explanation once and for all and just and just be done with it it's actually really stressful I won't lie Now, when you were notching, you formed something like an arrowhead on both sides. Very important. So the first thing, we'll, the next thing we we'll do now is to match what we notch at on the other side. This is to make it firm. If you match that on both sides, even if you are falling from a cliff and somebody grabs hold of your pocket, that person will be able to save you. So the next thing will be matching our arrowhead down. If you look very well, you will see the arrowhead. Or if you are trying it, you will see the arrowhead. So you mark from the beginning of the arrowhead to the end of the arrowhead. You do the same for the other part soon. Now, after doing this, there is absolutely no need for me to explain how to make a single, a single word pocket. This is a double white pocket. When you are making a single white pocket, just fold it once and make sure the folding you are folding is the one is the fold, is the is the one below, and it's big enough to cover every part of the pocket. The next we'll be doing is joining the facing to the borders, and when you are doing this. You just have to sew carefully at half inch. This doesn't really have any stress. Just sew down. The only technical place is when you are at the bottom of the joining. You just make sure you don't join to the very end of the of the facing at the bottom. You leave room for bending. Now I'll be introducing you to hemming. Hemming is what makes a suit perfectly arranged. So the first hemming I'll be doing is the buttonhole line, which is what I'm doing now. What this actually does is it makes the back face the back and the front face the front. So you don't actually see the back at the front and you don't actually see the front at the back. So let's say your suit has a lapel. If your suit has a lapel, hemming is what you use to make sure that what should show in the front is showing in the front and what shouldn't show at the front is not showing at the front now for this waistcoat that doesn't have a lapel the basic thing we are just trying to do here is to make sure that the back doesn't show at the front and the front doesn't show at the back shit now
this is a standard way of sewing a wisco. This does naturally mean probably you collect a contract, uh, an, an underpin contract of any sort, and start going through all this process to sew wisco. No, no, no. I don't usually subscribe to that. Like the quality of job you get is determinant on how much has been paid for you to get the right resources to do the job. So all this I'm doing now is for you to understand the standard way of doing it. And when you get paid the standard way, you do it the standard way. You can't go through all this stress for something that will pay you less. No, 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 no. And one of the major reasons why I'm doing this is so you can learn how to sew a suit. Because if you can sew this, you can sew 50% of a suit. Because a waistcoat is actually a suit without a sleeve and a collar. That is what is a waistcoat. Only a waistcoat is shorter and the sleeve is shorter. As you can see, when I'm joining the lining, I didn't cut the line into the perfect measurement of what I was supposed to do. I made sure my lining was SS. I made sure my lining was SS. This being because I don't like headache. I don't like to finish doing something and discovering that one is longer than the other. No. As it is now, all I have to do is iron, then trim, then hem again. And I will tell you the reason why. So as I, as, as, as I did with the former, I will do with this now. And like I once notified, when you are sewing a lighter piece to a hard piece, Make sure the lighter piece is on top. Lighter piece here being the lining. Because if the lining is under, whatever you are sewing will shrink. Even the best iron in the world won't be able to save that, that piece. So uh, I'll be trimming half inch, which I've already been doing. Now the next thing I'll be doing will be hemming. Why I'm hemming is I'm supposed to trim the line into the exact size of the front piece. But if you do that, you just discover that one part is longer than the other part. So before you trim, what you actually need to do is hem. When you hem, hemming is what makes hammed armhole stay at armhole. Tommy, stay at Tommy. Hip, stay at hip. And hemming is very good when you are actually sewing a suit. Because when you are attaching a suit sleeve to a suit bodice, you want the sleeve to be attached to the bodice. And you want the lining of the suit sleeve to also be attached to the lining of the suit bodice at the right concurrent positions. And you can only get that by hemming which is what i'm doing now so after hemming i can boastfully trim to the right measurement because i know i will not finish trimming and discover that one part is longer than the other part that is the reason for hemming and i didn't show you how i made the inner pocket the inner single vent pocket it's exactly the same way you make the double wet pocket So please like the video, share the video, let's make the video popular. It gets me inspired when I see my video getting more popular. So let's like, let's share. If you know anybody who needs it, you can share and go online and watch. So I'll do the same, I'll trim. My right trimming, I have to be careful not to be overconfident.
so i can proudly say the front piece is totally ready the next thing we'll be doing now is hemming the pockets to make sure we have nothing to do with the making of the front piece anymore like I said earlier, hemming is something you take your time and learn. Learn into that when you hem something, nobody will see any form of stitches outwards. That's the basic use of hemming. You have to be able to control the needle, make sure you want the needle to go exactly where you want it to go and nothing else. So just a brief recap on everything I've done. Like I said earlier, the basic thing to understand in making a waistcoat is the neck of the lining. The neck of the lining is what determines how the waistcoat overlap each other. I also give another note on how to calculate the and the button hole so like i was talking about the neck of the lining this is where i will give the full explanation now the neck of the lining is smaller than that of the front if the neck of the lining because i want my button hole to be half inch on an overlap on both sides so my neck of my lining will be half inch smaller than that of the front piece as you can see i measured three inch three inches sorry for my neck piece for my neckline but i measured three and a half for the front piece so that's what i'm trying to explain to you so just like i cut the front piece i'll measure one and a half downwards from the marked out nine points I actually had to go get the charcoal just to be able to make this video because no chalk was ever going to be conspicuous on this material they were all not visible in fact this video was stressful I tried like three different processes that failed because the chalk weren't visible at all and now we are able to get tiny tiny bits So every other thing is just every other thing when you're cutting the lining. The most important thing is just to know that the neckline is half inch smaller than that of the front piece. You're not having any sewing allowance, button allowance, that allowance, anything on the, the lining. So just like we did on the front piece, you mark out 9 inches to get the chest line. So you use your ruler to join both points to form the chest line. Just as we got the back for the front piece, we measure 9 and you take 1 inch inwards. For the chairs you just divide it by four so you divide the chairs by four just like you did for the front piece see the thing of cutting this line it doesn't really require any stress at all just do exactly what you did while cutting the front piece all this bending of tape is just to explain 
But the truth actually is there's nothing to stress about it. So I measure 16 and a half for the tummy line, just like I did for the front piece also. I'll just join both points to get my tummy line. So the next thing I'll be doing will be to mark out 25 inches for my hip line. So I'm guessing your hip line, you divide your hip line, you divide, okay, we'll go back in the tummy first, which is 34 divided by 4, and we'll also be marking the hip line, which is 35 divided by 4, then we'll be joining our point, joining it to the back, it goes also, and remember that back was 9, then 1 inch inwards, so it was actually marked at 0.8, not 9, because of the 1 inch inwards. Our hip, which is 35 divided by 4, you mark. So after marking, you join all the mapped out points. You literally just join all the mapped out points. This has no unnecessary um, wasting of time. You just join all the mapped out points. So after joining all our mapped up points, the next thing we'll be doing will be to cut. Then when we cut, we'll start by sewing this neckline. I don't I just wish I just wish the the charcoal I'm using will be easy to clean off into wet pieces. So we'll be sewing our neckline. When you are sewing our neckline, we just maintain a constant distance through. If you are using half inch, just go half inch down. Half inch is what I usually use for all my sewings. So if you can maintain your sewing allowance, you will actually get your curve. So after cut sewing anything curvy, the next thing you do is to notch.
so you notch and after notching you attach the shoulder line of the lining to the shoulder line of the front piece for each and opposite sides now i will not be showing every part of the video because of time i think i'm almost done everything i will be needing to be do everything i'll be needed to do will be to just join 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 so for now we'll be joining the the shoulder line with the line into the shoulder line of the front piece and we'll also be joining the armhole and the side it's just exactly the same way we're joining the shoulder line everything will be the shoulder line everything will be sewn inwards So we'll be doing the same for the other part of the front piece too. So you will saw, you saw the arm hold the same way and the side the same way. So just to save time. So as you can see now, the bottom hole is, is half inch overlapping each other. Because the neck was half inch smaller than the front piece. So just the way you saw the show that you saw the arm hole and you saw the side. And the next thing we'll be doing is to hem the down line. The way you hem the down line is to use your pressing iron to bend the upper and the lower part to the desired length you want then you use your thread and needle to hem now after using your thread and needle to hem you use the pockets the inner pockets to bring out all the insides of the waistcoat then you sew from inside like I said everything we've been doing in sewing a suit or a waistcoat is to make sure every sewing is not visible outside every sewing is only visible inside So after this part, we'll be going to the finishing part of the sewing. The finishing part of the sewing is done by first of all bringing out the insides from the pocket. So when you bring out the insides from the pocket, you will attach your hair stay to the down line of the waistcoat. You attach your hair, your hair stay to the part where the facing meets the lining. So the facing can actually join the borders of the suit you know back in those days they used to show what we call a village suit where the body will be going north and the facing will be going left the facing has to be attached to the border so everything is out and next thing we'll be joining our hair stay which we've already cut long to the down line from the beginning to the end
and we'll also be adding hasty like i said earlier to the part where the facing joins the lining now the part where the facing joins the lining is mostly overcrowded with pocket so just be careful on that part so one of the things i wanted you to take note is when i was sewing the inner pocket i actually made the inner pocket in a position where there is no outside pocket the breast pocket was on the other side so i made the inner pocket so as you can see now we are adding fit we are adding stay to the part where the facing meets the lining i will do that for both both sides So after attaching her stay, you bring everything back through that same pocket. Then you go to the uh, table and do the final finishing by pressing it. So we'll do the finishing by pressing. Now after pressing, all the parts we attach the lining will be firmly gummed. So the facing can firmly attach itself to the front piece. The finishing part is also where we get to remove all the hemming threads. So like I advised earlier, when you are hemming, make sure you use an off thread. So when you are doing a finishing, the thread is visible enough. As you can see, that part is firm. So the thread is visible enough for you to remove it. So you, cannot be, you can't be saying white and be using white as a hemming thread. Nothing can be done, but it's not advisable in fact if if i'm sewing black i like to use white as the hemming thread because both colors are, are opposite colors so the finishing is mostly based on ironing ironing done with like a steam iron so everything that needs to be gone will be gone well. So like I said earlier, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe. I have loads and loads and loads of videos on the process. And they are going to make things easier for you when you are working. So please subscribe to the channel. Support the channel. It's for a good cause. And we can continue making memories together. And I promise to drop well detailed video, nothing from a cramped perspective. Everything is well documented and well explained. So the next thing I'll be doing will be to try and remove every single form of hemming thread. After doing that, I should be done with the job of the day. Pressing is something that you just don't do under five minutes that you are recording a video. Something you do 
very very well when you are chanced but for now our job is done and I can see a very 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 big thank you for all the subscribers of this channel you guys motivate me thank you